Coleman, inviting you to radio's most dramatic half hour. Favorite story. Storytellers picks his own favorite story, that's news. It's Mr. Bennett Cerf's choice that we've scheduled for this week. You know Mr. Cerf as an internationally distinguished editor and publisher, the author of the bestseller Try and Stop Me, and a very well known man about the literary world. Since Bennett Cerf is quite a collector of humorous stories, we rather expected him to select a comedy, but he surprised us. He chose the weird and haunting novel about the love between a servant boy and a high born lady on the windswept moors of England. So, for Mr. Cerf, and for all of you who call this your favorite story, here's Emily Bronte's immortal Wuthering Heights. How do they sleep? The first night they lie in the yellow mud of Gimmerton Churchyard. How do they sleep? Do they rest dreamless when soft words are breathed over them? Dear Lord, when this our sister Catherine Earnshaw enters into thy city of eternal light, do welcome her spirit and grant her lasting peace and find her a place to Do they my suffer baby. loneliness there in the churchyard in spite of the soothing words? Then how must they sleep who go to the eternal rest with these words echoing over them? Hey, she wake and torment! I pray one prayer! I repeat it till my tongue stiffens! Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest as long as I'm living! You said I killed you! Haunt me then! Be with me always! Take any form, drive me mad, only do not leave me in this living hell where I cannot find you. Miss Kathy. Miss Kathy, wake up. Go away. Let me now, you shan't sleep another minute, you lazy liar bed. It's past nine o'clock. Oh, oh Nellie, I don't now, want to get up. Now, out of that bed, oh. you. Besides, Miss Cathy, you already have callers. Callers? They're waiting for you downstairs in the park. Who? Oh. The Lintons, Mr. Edgar and his sister. Oh. They've come to wish you a happy birthday. Let me sleep another quarter hour. No, you don't. <laughs> You must have been swimming in some pretty dreams to want to go back to them so much. No. They weren't pretty. Do you know what I dreamed, Nellie? What? I dreamed I was dead. Oh. I did, Nellie. I, I was lying in the shadow of Gimmerton Kirk. All cold. And I couldn't move. And I heard a thumping above my head. I, I didn't know what it was. And then I knew. It was the sexton shoveling clods of earth over my coffin. And I heard Heathcliff. Heath. He was calling to me, but I, I wouldn't answer him. For spite, Nellie. I wouldn't answer him for spite. And you want to go back and dream about that? Come along now. Put on your dressing gown. Oh. Downstairs with you. Wait. Oh, aren't you going to wish me a happy birthday, Nellie? Not till you paid your respects to the Linton. <laughs> Good morning, Happy dear birthday, Catherine. Hello, Isabella. Edgar, this is an unusual hour to be calling, isn't it? Well, we were on our way to town. And we thought we'd be the first to wish you a happy birthday. You are. Did you bring me a present? I know. Only these flowers. Thank you, Edgar. You're very kind. And Catherine, we're having a party at the Grange tonight. 
whiskey and supper. May we expect you? I'm afraid not, Isabella. I have another engagement. Couldn't you break it? The party is really for you. Then you should have told me sooner and I wouldn't have made up the plan. I'm sorry. So am I. Well, uh, good morning, Kathy. Edgar and I must be on our way to Gimmerton. Goodbye, Kathy. If you should change your mind... I shall. Good day, Edgar. Isabella? Well, it's a fine, ungrateful little wretch you are, Catherine Earnshaw. The Lintons come all the way over here to invite you to a party at the Grange. In your honor. And you have another engagement. I have. With whom, I'd like to know. Heathcliff. I promise to spend my day with him. A common laboring I'll man. I'll not hear a word Without against even him. a Christian name. A sulking, black soap. I told you. I won't speak a word against him. Forgive me, Nelly. I didn't mean to strike you. But you must try to understand. You see... I'm afraid I'm in love with Heathcliff. You, didn't I? Uh, I'm tired of running, Heathcliff. Oh, look where we are. The halfway hill. It's a long way down to Wuthering Heights. We, we must start back. Why? Uh, it's almost dark. What's wrong with the dark? Well, there's a storm blowing up. You know I love the rain. If it's warm, if it's cold, you put your coat around my shoulder. And you've no shoes. I hate shoe leather. I'd run barefoot through the deepest snow of winter if I had my way. You're a wild, untamed creature. Like you, Heathcliff. I'm very much like what would Joseph say when he finds you ran off from your work to spend the day with me? He may flog me a few times. Will you mind? Has it been worth it to spend my birthday with me? Yes, Kathy. When is your birthday, Heathcliff? I... I haven't any. You must have. Or perhaps not. Do you have parents? My father was a sailor, I was told. A sailor? And he conjured you up by magic spirits out of the foam of the ocean of India, didn't he? And your godfather was the Khedive of Baghdad. And your guardian angel, the Magi of Persia. It's true, isn't it? I don't know, Kathy. The words from books... No matter. Your mind, and your birth or your birthday don't matter in the least. Do you love me? Heathcliff? Yes? Tell me with your lips. I love you, Kathy. You know I love you. Now, tell me with your lips, but without the word. Do you love me, Kathy? Kathy? Well, do you? I, I think I love you as much as I should ever be able to love anyone. Heathcliff, look down there at the Grange. There's a light in every window. The Lintons must be having a party. Do you know who the party is for? Me. Let's go to it, Heathcliff, you and I. No, Kathy. We won't go inside. We'll just peek in the windows. I'll race you all the way to the Grange. <laughs> powder and paint and silly costumes. But the funniest part of it is they don't know how funny they are. You know what I Kathy. see? Kathy. What's wrong? Something moved in the bush behind us. None. Come closer to the window. I want to watch Edgar filling cups with the punch bowl. Now, gather around the punch bowl, everybody. I oh, hear you are, Dave Kathy. Another cup of punch? Thank you ever so much. Edgar, I'm going to get more people. More punch, Mr. Zilla? <laughs> Please, I'll bring the light. Nothing to worry about. We have a good watchdog. Skulker. Here, boy. Good dog, Skulker. Uh, there's two people. One of them's hurt. Hold up the lantern, Isabella. All right, Edgar. Who is it? You didn't try to run away. The constable will find you. Oh, it's that laboring man from Wuthering Heights. 
What would you do, good neighbor Linton? That dog of yours had the hospitality to sink his teeth into my aunt, lady's ankle. Oh, that. Oh. Edgar, I must bandage up. No. Catherine. Heathcliff will take care of me. It's the angel. Catherine. Has the angel. Wandering around the moors at night. You invited me to your party, didn't you? Isabella? Edgar? Hardly expect You me. always welcome your guests with the teeth of your watchdog. Come, Cathy, we'll go back to the house. Yes, I... Oh, oh, she can't oh. walk. It's three miles back to Weathering Heights and a storm coming. You must stay here, Catherine. I'll nurse your ankle. Mr. Heathcliff, we will thank you to go to the Earnshaws post-haste and tell them Cathy is staying here with us until her ankle is healed. <laughs> At least I should think you would brush your hair, Heathcliff, and wash your forehead. Why should I? It's been five weeks since you've seen Miss Cathy. I think you'd want to look presentable to welcome her back from the Linton. Miss Cathy will have to take me as I am. Oh, you won't brush your hair. Miss Cathy. Even for me. Oh, it's so good to have you back home again. Is your ankle here? As good as new. Oh, Nellie, I wanted to surprise you, so I had Edgar drive me in the back way. Just stand there. (laughs) Let's have a look at you. Oh, aren't you the grand lady now? All dressed up in silks with a veil and all. What do you think of me, Heathcliff? Am I changed? Heathcliff, where are you going? I have my work to do. He acts strangely. Is he well? You should know by now, Heathcliff always acts strangely. I'm afraid I hurt his feelings. He loves me, you know. You're not serious. Yes, I am. Before I went to the linen side... I'd actually thought of marrying him. I know that's out of the question now. It would degrade me to marry Heathcliff. A common laborer without so much as a Christian name. Do I degrade you, Cathy? Oh. You should be ashamed, eavesdropping. I'm ashamed of nothing. Do not worry, Miss Earnshaw. I have no intention of degrading you. You shall never see me again until I return to Wuthering Heights as the equal of you. Or better. Heathcliff. Heathcliff, don't go. Goodbye, Cathy. We'll meet one day. On the moors. Oh, you needn't cry, miss. This had to happen sooner or later. You'll forget him in a short while, and you won't even remember his name. Yes. you're right, Nellie. It will be easy to forget him. After the wedding. The wedding? Yes. Yes, Nellie, I... I'm engaged to be married. To Edgar Linton. Act two of Bennett Surf's favorite story, Wuthering Heights. I believe it was Congreve who remarked that there is no fury like a woman scorned. He makes no mention, however, of man's fury when he discovers his own true love has accidentally found herself another husband. And the new Mrs. Edgar Linton could hardly expect Heathcliff to accept her loveless marriage with a philosophical shrug of his shoulders. <laughs> time you were coming up to bed? I'm not sleepy. I, I think I'll walk a bit if you don't mind, Edgar, dear. Don't worry about me. Good evening. What? Do you often go for walks at night on the moors? Who is it? Oh, Kathy, darling. Please. I told you I would come back. I, I can't believe. Is it really you? been so long. Three years, Cathy. Three eternities. Where have you been, Heathcliff? Why didn't you write? Was there any reason or any need? I'm back now, Cathy, and I've made a fortune. You needn't worry about my degrading you. I'm as rich as any man in the county. Heathcliff, how? In my way, Cathy. I'll never leave you now. We'll be together always. And all the months I've been away and all the three long years I've kept alive by thinking of you. You'll never leave me now, never. Heathcliff. Don't you know? I know I love you, you only, Kathy. I've married. To Edgar Linton. 
We were married just a month after you ran away. I had no business doing it, I suppose, but no one knew where you were, and Edgar adored me. Heathcliff, don't look at me like that. This is Edgar Linton. <laughs> Mrs. Edgar Linton. <laughs> Well, Nellie? Heathcliff. What are you doing here at the Grange? Wouldn't you expect me to be where Miss Cathy is? You don't seem to be glad to see me, Nellie. At least you can invite me in and announce to your master that he has a caller, a gentleman from Gimmerton. Who is it, Nellie? Your new neighbor, sir. Permit me to introduce oh? myself. I'm Mr. Heathcliff, the proprietor of Wuthering Heights. Mr. Heathcliff? I've just purchased the Heights. It's a rather outlandish price, I'm afraid, but I wanted to own the place for sentimental reasons. Who was the caller, Edgar? Was it... Mr. Heathcliff. Huh? This is my sister, Isabella. How did you do? We've met, I believe, Miss Linton, several years ago when a dog of yours had the discourtesy to wound a dear friend of mine in the leg. Uh, by the way, Mr. Linton, I believe that my belated congratulations are in order. I wish you and Mrs. Linton all of life's joys and happiness. You will stay for tea, Mr. Heathcliff. Isabella, I do. You're no very matter. gracious, Miss Linton. I shall be honest. Nelly, will you serve tea here in the library? And tell Cassie that an old friend of hers is here. I heard his voice. You remember, Mr. Heathcliff? Yes, Isabella. I remember him. Aren't you surprised to see him, Catherine? Why should she be surprised? She's known that I've been here. We've seen each other. Haven't we, Cassie? What am I to infer from that? Why, nothing, sir. Unless you choose to suspect your wife of infidelity, Mr. which Heath, I... Mr. if I demand that you retract that insinuation. My dear Mr. Linton, I, Lent, and I have no... Please, Tom, for my sake. You must be friends. You promise, Edgar. Ah, uh, very well. I promise. And you, Heathcliff? I want nothing more than to be friends with you, Cathy. And Mr. Linton. And Miss Isabella. daylight under the arbor in the garden. He was kissing her and... Surely you and... can't hold me to my promise, Cathy, when the man behaves in such a loathsome fashion. It's too much to keep up even a pretense of friendship. Stay here. I'll go and have a word with Isabella. May I come in? It's not locked. Well, Sister Cathy, have they sent you in to lecture to me? Is it true that Heathcliff has been making advances to you? He finds me attractive. He's playing with you. He's pretending an infatuation with you to revenge himself on Edgar and on me. He doesn't love you. You're jealous. No, Isabella. The gentleman from Timmerton is here. Heathcliff has been expecting. He's calling on me, not you, Cassie. Tell Mr. Heathcliff to come up. He's taking me for a stroll this afternoon. We have a secret place we go. Out on the moor. Hello, Isabella. Oh, Cassie. I'm sorry to be an unwelcome third party in this rendezvous. There's something I insist on knowing. It's this. Do you love Isabella? You don't have to ask. She's mad with jealousy. Why should she be jealous of me? I'm not her husband. I'm not jealous of you. I'm jealous for you. Clear your face, you shan't scoff. If you like Isabella, you shall have her, but do you like her? I'm marrying her. Will Edgar Linton approve? Will he approve? <laughs> By all the saints above and all the devils below, I don't care one jack draw if he approves or not. I do what I choose. And as for you, Catherine Linton, I have a few words to say to you. I want you to be aware that I know that you've treated me infernally. I've treated you? If you flatter yourself, I don't see it. You're a fool. And if you think I can be consoled with sweet words, you're an idiot. If you think I'll suffer this yes, unrevenge... You remain in this room after the language this ruffian has used to you. Edgar. Your presence in this house, Mr. Heathcliff, is a moral poison. I require your instant departure. 
Kathy, this lamb of yours threatens like a bull. Does it know it is in danger of splitting its skull against my knuckles? Uh, I give you three minutes to leave. I'm going to get the servants to show you forcibly from the house. Well, Kathy, I trust you are ecstatically happy with your milk-blooded coward of a husband. I compliment you on your taste. So that is the slavering, shivering thing you preferred to me. Get out. Get out before he comes with an army of lackeys to disgrace himself. And you and me. Please, now. Miss dear, what about our war? Oh. Later, Isabella, darling. Farewell to you all, my dear, sweet neighbor. Get out of my sight. Don't come near me. Hold up, Roy. They're into you. Nellie! Where is that wretched servant? Nellie! Yes, yes, yes. A thousand Smith hammers are beating in my head. Nellie, tell my dear devoted husband that I'm in danger of being seriously ill. I hope I am. I want to frighten him. Edgar has behaved so badly to me that I may die just to make him miserable. Isabella, if you don't leave me, I shall scratch your eyes out. Calm yourself, Kathy, darling. Ed, you have made me sick with your rage. Don't you see? I can scarcely stand. Edgar, I... Kathy, darling, precious Kathy, what have I done to you? Oh, Mr. Linton, look at her. She has blood on her lips. Good evening, sir. Who is it, Nellie? A gentleman from Gimmerton. Good evening, sir. How is she, Linton? You must know, Mr. Heathcliff, that my wife's condition is critically serious, or you would not have been summoned to this house. Why didn't you take decent care of her? The best doctors in England have been in almost constant attendance at her bedside. I must go to her. She has been asking for you. Follow me, Mr. Heathcliff. What's she saying? She's plucking feathers out of her pillow. She does it hours at a time. And this is a flat wing, wheeling over our heads in the middle of the moor. Oh, I feel the rain coming. The wind has to. Winter. Hold me, close, Heathcliff. Hold me. I'm here, Kath. I'm close to you. Where, where have you been, Heathcliff? You ran away and left me. And I'm very annoyed with you. I've never really left you, Kath. You did. You left me. You ran off with Isabella. But I've come back to you. Anna. Not until I lie on my deathbed. I'm dying, Heathcliff. No. I am. And it, it serves you right that I should die. Kathy. Because you murdered me. Kathy, I've done what I've done because I've loved you more than life. It hasn't been to hurt you, but to hurt the people who came between us, the people who made you think I'd degrade you. I've never loved anyone but you, Kathy. I'm yours as long as you needn't trouble yourself further, Mr. Heathcliff. I'm afraid that my wife, Catherine, has passed beyond the reach of your voice. Oh, my. <laughs> How does she sleep? 
The first night in the yellow mud of Gimmerton Churchyard. Dear Lord, when this our departed Catherine enters thy city of eternal light, may she wake in lasting peace. No! May she wake in torment! I pray one prayer, I repeat it till my tongue stiffens. Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest as long as I'm living. You said I killed you. Haunt me, then. Be with me always. Take any form. Drive me mad. Only do not leave me in this living hell where I cannot find you. Is it really you? Or is it just the wind over the moon? I cannot haunt you. The dead are tormented for their evil deeds. But the living must haunt themselves. Kathy. Kathy, where are you? Kathy. The living must haunt themselves. Kathy! Kathy! favorite story production of Wuthering Heights, starring Janet Waldo in the role of Kathy and William Conrad as Heathcliff, one of the great tragic romances of the English language. My congratulations to Miss Waldo, Mr. Conrad, and the entire cast on their splendid performances. And our thanks to Mr. Bennett Surf, who chose Wuthering Heights as his favorite story. Next week, a thousand years disappear into thin air as we bring you the favorite story choice of Ed Gardner, the Archie of Duffy's Tavern. It's Mark Twain's delicious story, A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. We hope you'll be listening. <laughs>